The first year was not was not easy. You think you have failed in your parenthood journey. It's like probation. Yeah. Yeah. At least probation cannot fail one. You must pass. Hey, la, you think your father very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to The Hot Pot, where we hop into different pots of spaces people find themselves in during life's transitions. I'm Joey. I'm Q. And I'm Nick. So today's episode is very interesting. It's about fatherhood and how to navigate fatherhood in the workplace. So mm. if you are a new father or if you know someone who is, then this episode is for you. Yes, and today we have two very special guests to share more about this topic. We have Xiaoming from SGAG and Woo-hoo! Josiah. Woo-hoo! I am Xiaoming from SGAG. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a yeah, father of one boy. Wow. Yeah. How, how? 18 months. Actually, at which point you stop saying months? Ah? Yeah, I was like, just gonna like, I can't really calculate two years, la, I think two years. Two years, is, right. yeah. I have two boys, and it confuses me every time. People say, "Oh, my kid is like eighteen months, twenty-four months." I'm like, "Must count, you know." Yeah. 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 Josiah, how about you? Oh, uh, hi. I'm Josiah. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Mm. I have two kids, three-year-old mm. and seven-year-old. Nick, how about you? Just kidding. Wow. Oh, uh, do you have something to announce? <laughs> no, eh, no. Yeah, did you just get married? Uh, I did just yeah. get married. So to kick things off, how has fatherhood been like for you guys? Yeah, yeah, come summarize yeah. your fatherhood journey. Mm. Three words, okay, three words. Ha, no, wow, la, three, three words. words, three words, three words. One <laughs> sentence. Uh. Wow. Okay. I think this three paragraph. Or three. Wow, wow, yes, wow. Like, okay. I, I always tell my friends this, uh, like you can have the worst possible day, then you go home to your kids, and then your day just changes for the better. Wow. wow. But you can also have the best, best possible day. <laughs> <laughs> go home, and then your day just like gets screwed up just because, uh, yeah. On days when things go wrong, you don't know what the <laughs> kid wants, you know, especially in the early yeah. months where they can't really talk or express themselves. Wow. Yeah. It's just, it just goes haywire mm. both mm. You know, at, at home. What were some key, key moments in your journey as a father? Like, you never forget. And I, I feel like with fatherhood, you realize the very extreme emotions that you might not have felt before. Like mm. maybe you realize you have never been so worried about somebody. Mm. You've never been also so uh, you, you love some some something or somebody like so much. So like the first thunderstorm that like, he actually uh, been through as a Aww. kid, like the wow. boom, then suddenly he he got scared. And mm. and that just natural reaction, like I don't know, this fatherly reaction to just want to protect shield him and, or yeah, shield yeah. him, yeah. it just 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 kicked in like that. You know, when it comes to extreme joy and happiness, is as simple as yeah, picking him up from school. Mm. Oh, you see the the delight like in his face, right? Oh, oh and just running towards you It's really like the kind of you can have the worst day like at, at work or whatsoever. But the moment you see that, right? Oh, it's like, okay, you know, all the mm. problems like melt right away. away. Totally. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does so, the joy run out? I mean, like, because for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> because, right, for Josiah, he's a stay home dad, and you, you fetch your son every yeah. single day, right? Yeah. Watching him run towards you, does the joy. Well, desensitize yeah. him after a while. Good question. So far, I haven't. La. So far, oh, okay, haven't. okay. Yeah. Oh, I good. mean, I still feel the, the joy, but the joy can come in various forms. Mm. Yeah. Exactly like what you said, you know, it's like you never recognize that there's such an emotion that you can feel yeah. with someone because like, even like recently you went to Perth uh, I decided to cook like soup every day for him wow when I see him drink the soup uh, I'm not a good cook uh. I don't wow. think I'm a good cook <laughs> but the way he, he drink like, <laughs> like kick, wow <laughs> then I'm like wow <laughs> ego boost <laughs> Actually, Josiah, for you, quite interesting like there was one day where I saw his LinkedIn post announcing that he was going to become a stay home dad then I was like, wow, mm. like, what mm. was the thought process and the things that you have to put in place before you make that decision? So for me, being a father was about being present. But then I came to a point in my working life where I realized that I wasn't really there there for mm. my kids. Mm. I was uh, sending my kid to school one day and then my kid just wanted to look at chickens. I mean, my house, don't know why I got chickens running around. Mm. So he wanted to look at chickens and I was like, no time really, I need, got a meeting, my boss is texting, you know, he got like 101 things on my mind, right? For some reason, left an impression on me, like I couldn't have that chicken time with him mm. to be present with him. There are moments where I'm like, oh, am I making the right decision? You know, am I lagging behind in terms of my career and all that? But when we look at chickens and I'm like just spending that moment with him and being present with him, mm. I feel like, oh, actually, this is worth it. La. They always say that mothers connect better with their kids. How do you feel about that? 
there were a lot of moments where my elders would come to me and then there's this like shared connection where he tells me some secrets. <laughs> so I, I guess by that virtue, it's like you I can connect, connect with him. <laughs> la, right? mm. I mean, yeah. of course you say things like, hey, don't tell mommy, ah, but you know, there's this uh, mm. thing that happened in school that, you know, that he tries to process a bit of like what he feels and all that. Mm. Yeah. Fathers have the ability to nurture that is often overlooked. Like nurturing seems to be only from a mother in, in societies like expectations, right? And the mom will need to nurture the child. But I think nurturing can come from the dad too. When you say though, it's not that like, you know, dads can connect, but it doesn't mean that as a result of that, the moms don't yeah, connect. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can coexist. Can coexist, yeah. exactly. So yes, my kid tells me stuff, mm. but you know, after he tells me stuff, right, his reaction may not be as emotional. Mm. But then when my wife comes home from work and then they connect in their nice little moment after dinner, right? My kid will, tell her one sentence about what happened. And then after that, break down and cry, you know. So very different from Very like, different yeah. in terms of like reaction. So he processes things with me, I guess a bit more logically, mm. but he processes things with my wife a bit more emotionally. Mm. It's like oh. friends yeah. got, you know, your friends have different purposes. You have yeah. the practical yes. friends yeah. and then you yeah. have the yeah. emotional, emotional friend. support yeah. friends. But even yeah. at 18 months, I also realized that that's the same thing that relying on my wife for a lot of emotional mm. like, support, he expresses yeah. himself a lot more emotionally. Just so natural, right, for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but with me, then it's, a bit different. It's you were, yeah, you were for more like, or not? Okay lah. Okay lah. Like, yeah, I know that there's a kind of different <laughs> role that we play. As long as he wants me for something, I'm like, okay, okay. As an employer or like someone running your own business, right? What are some realizations and things that you have now put in place like in your company, right? To like support parenthood. I think the luxury that maybe that I have is that this is a company that I've set up, I, I, that, that I run. I have the ability to maybe change certain things so that we can support like fathers like myself um, mm. a little bit better. Mm. Now I understand why a lot of like the dads right in the company would always suddenly have to run off and say, "Oh, the childcare <laughs> call because my kid was like you know has runny nose and need to bring my kid like back home." <laughs> now that I'm a dad, you know these are things that I really come to a realization that family. There's a lot of things that with kids. There's a lot of things that is unexpected that that yeah. might happen. And I think yeah. uh, as employers, as companies, we need to think about how can we be understanding first and foremost, and maybe be able to craft um, policies. Right, be able to cut processes and structures to, to help that succeed both at home and at mm. work. As a father, right, if you are focusing on like, you know, your children too much, then your career needs to take a back seat or you might need to sacrifice a bit in terms of like your career ambitions and things like that. Mm. Do you all think that this is the case in Singapore or like actually like there's a way to navigate around it? Obviously, with fatherhood, it, it, it takes up a little bit more time of your day. I mean, that is, that is the truth. But I, I feel like ever since I became a dad, it also forces me to be a lot more efficient with my time. Mm. Like now, like, I can't just sit around, you know, make sure like every hour that I spend at work is meaningful stuff. So I don't necessarily agree that, yeah, just because you are a dad, you know, you become less important or you become, you know, not as valuable an, an employee. I think with the right mindset, with the right priorities, the way, the right way in which you are structuring this new phase of life, you can still be as good or maybe even better now, especially with the perspective of like a dad, mm. like how you take care of your employees, where you get, might get more empathy as well, mm. like in terms of understanding how people feel. I never thought about it that way before, where like the fatherhood skills are transferable to like professional skills. Yeah, like the dad jokes, not, sure. crack, not just on my kid, but on my employee. <laughs> I thought it's the other <laughs> way around. You do your, <laughs> you, you dad it. jokes first, yeah, yeah, you've been true, practicing true. for years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the moment the shine yeah, has come. even before you were dead. <laughs> no, <know>? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> one level, yeah. I remember very distinctly that it was about setting the right processes in place. Mm. Mm. Now that you're dead, you kind of know there are certain moments where you can't really answer calls mm. or you know react on the spot. But when I'm contactable, I'll definitely be there to you know have a conversation with you about whatever that needs to react. Mm. And when I'm not contactable, this is the other person that you can contact. Actually, I also feel that like Singapore as a whole the workforce is generally quite equipped and understanding of like parenthood and new parents and like the things that parents have to go through. And I think that was also accelerated through COVID. The lines between like work and home were blurred a bit more. Mm. Then suddenly even like non-parents were also quite like getting an insight on like what parents' lives are like at home. For me, before I even became a stay-home dad, actually there were a lot of flexible work arrangements that my employer gave me. Mm. So for example, I would say, okay, you know what, I'll come into work slightly earlier 
one hour before the rest of my colleagues. La. I, I really appreciate that because that would mean I don't have to rush all the way to my son's school. Mm. Um, things are a little bit less hectic. Mm. But of course, that would mean, again, conversations. And at the end of the day, it's about connecting with your colleagues as well and mm. helping each other appreciate each other's circumstances. La. So actually in Singapore, right, from 1st January 2024, working fathers are now eligible for up to four weeks of paternity mm. leave. So it used to be only two weeks. Yeah. Quite different, oh. Because I was talking to my I was talking to my dad about this. He said like, wow, my time like one day. The Who's, day that the child's born, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like when I was born, oh. he get like half day off. Then after that, like come out already, right? Cut the umbil- umbilical cord, right? <laughs> then go back <laughs> for meeting, <laughs> eh. Question <laughs> What has been your biggest achievement to date? Being oh. a father. Yeah. Alright, alright. Being a father. <laughs> can, can you take being a father very easy? <laughs> <laughs> How about a sub achievement? I have a cat and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite household chore to do? Wow. wow. Not bad, not bad. I actually really like to vacuum the floor. Eh, hey, same man. Everybody likes to vacuum. It gives me the satisfaction to see all the hairs. All inside the vacuum. Oh. Agree. Would you rather have twin boys or twin girls? Boys. I think in the past when I always wanted to be a mum, I wanted boys. Would you rather get pooped on <laughs> or vomited on by your baby? <laughs> well, that's a great question. I would love for my baby to poop on me. You love? What's a question you've always wanted to ask your dad? <gasps> you love me or not, pa? <laughs> Maybe this will be the third time he cried. Eh, hey, no, first time he's here. Are you proud of me? Oh. Wow. Wow, so Uncle good. Yim, comment down below. <laughs> but actually, he got said before, like, he said he's proud of me. Back yeah. then, it's really like, men, y'all should work. Yeah. And yeah. y'all shouldn't be helping out at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then the vibe is also a bit like, hey, my wife uh, giving birth now. Then the boss will be like, okay, la, you go, la, go, la. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> not even congrats, no. Like, go la, go Maybe la. give half a day already, very what? good already. You choose yeah. your wife. Faster and go, child, faster come back. Or your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. So we have come a long way. We, we have. Yeah. We have yeah. I feel like societal standards, like, if a dad is very proactive, they say, like, oh, why you're so lucky, they're not a wife, like, you're so lucky your husband helps out so much. It's the like f- a bonus. Yeah, yeah you really know what I mean? Like, oh, you're very lucky yeah. he's so, like, good with the kids. I mean, he's the father. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be there for the kids. In the yeah, first so place. language yeah. like that. Yeah. And when we hear it and when we witness it, you know, subconsciously we are absorbing that, oh, he's, he's, doing more than he should he's actually helping out but he's yeah. not helping he's fulfilling his role as a mm. dad yeah actually yeah. even in my decision of being a stay-at-home dad right you know when i had to announce to people so that mm. people know what i'm up to right now why mm. i'm not at work right i had a lot of like hey wow you're so good ah. you know wow. like kudos to you congratulations you know like there was a big hoo-ha la. Mm. then i had a conversation with my wife and then we came to a point of like you know what if a lady would have done the same thing uh, right? yeah and said, hey guys you know what i'm gonna take a break from work I'm gonna watch my kids mm. Mm. the reaction would be like oh okay lor. yeah yeah like well, well, which, tai, which I makes you also money. feel yeah. like you know yeah, yeah. Can confirm so that there was indeed well. a big hoo-ha. <laughs> like everybody is sharing, then people send to me eh. Then I was like, yeah, because yeah. I always joke that I want to be stay-at-home dad lah. What was it like being a new dad at your previous employment? I think for me, a lot of the pressures that I, I went through were self-inflicted lah. Because mm. my employers were actually very understanding. Mm. Yeah, but I was always at a point of questioning myself. Mm. You know, not wanting to share and keeping things to myself. My boss was a father. Mm. The moment I spoke to him about it, you know, there was that conversation and he said, well, you know what, you know, it's normal to feel this way. Let's very practically plan, you know, how can we set certain boundaries for you? Mm. Mm. And the moment you are in that boundary, don't feel guilty already lah. You know, we already mm. set this boundary, this moment or this moment, you are a father, this moment or this moment, you are, you're going to be focusing on other things. Mm. Yeah, and that, that helps a lot. Right. Wow, it sounds like yeah. a great boss eh. So, I mean, can I ask? Uh, for are you a great boss? <laughs> 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 great, great boss. Speaking of great well, bosses. Let's bring yeah. my employee one by one here. <laughs> Surprise you, your employees are here. Just kidding. Uh, no, but I wanted to ask, have you ever faced an incident or a circumstance where you had to drop everything at work for a while to, you know, to attend to your kid? You know, with things that's happened at home, there's also different level of like, criticalness and it's not everything that requires my immediate attention there's mm. some stuff that okay you know maybe I can close off this meeting and I'll just jump off uh, you know seek the understanding of you know people who are working with me that mm. you know if I have to jump off it's really for something that's important Yeah. so a lot of like what Josiah has mentioned the communication the expectations right, being able to share openly about your new role as a parent as, as a dad 
and hopefully be able to seek the understanding uh, with people who are working with you is extremely um, important so that they don't think that you know you're just disappearing mm. yeah. they don't know what you're doing yep. yeah right are you jumping off to go chowking somewhere yeah. <laughs> or do something mm, go else Bali for three days. yeah so i feel like <laughs> yeah all these communications and the setting of expectations will eventually build trust yeah. sounds like communicating is the key it's, thing here it's truly the key i mm. feel like this is so inspiring because we often hear are you going to be a career driven person or are you going to be a family person and it almost feels like it's one or the other but evidently you can have both we just need to communicate that with obviously your partner at home and, and your boss as well or mm. your employees mm. for example mm. how was paternity leave for you because a lot of times like there's the misconception that like okay lah you not you give birth ma. <laughs> so like you know the physical recovery your wife is doing that or the mom is doing that what is the role of like a father during paternity leave? Basically, you take leave for what lah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah like, what, what are you doing lah? What are you doing? <laughs> well, like, harsh. Every day, what, every day, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, my experience ah uh, was that took leave. Very new father. Mm. Learn how to change diapers. Mm. And you know these things take time to hands on uh. Of course, mm. you would have done a bit of prep work before that. Mm. Maybe with a like door, nothing prepares door, you door, right? for the real. Nothing prepares <laughs> you for the new thing. one. Uh, I mean, for a new, new one, for a new baby, <laughs> right? <laughs> It, it felt as if like, okay, I kind of got this mm. down, mm. you know, got a bit of the practice already. Then, wow, must go back to work already. Mm. Oh. So that short period of time wasn't really uh, enough. enough for me mm. to, you know, continue to be there as, as, as a support for my wife and my family. Mm. So I mean, what about you? How was your two weeks? Well, I mean, I think for the first two weeks of paternity leave, I was just really trying to keep this little baby that I have alive. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that that first two to three weeks, uh, the paternity leave is extremely emo- uh, important. La. Everything is new to you. And yeah. if you Google right a problem, there's like one million solution to it. There's could be one million reasons why. Yeah. And the baby is there crying and you're just like, oh my God, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. husband's being there right to maybe just pick one out of the million solution to try mm. and see whether yeah. it works even something simple like that uh, it, it really helps I feel like mm. you know for, for new mothers and, and the first few weeks actually like the baby needs to feed at night so you need to wake up every yes. like oh, yeah, four yeah, hours yeah. sleep and all training that, yeah. Yeah. no no the first no, yeah, couple no, of weeks no, no sleep oh training oh my god you just, yeah. you just yeah, yeah, yeah. wake just through feeding. the night on, right? yeah. 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 it's like it's they jet lag yeah, they jet lag they jet lag every day the womb timing different yeah so the father's actually I mean, obviously we can't breastfeed, but mm. yeah. like really, you didn't know you didn't work. You didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you can actually hold the baby mm. right while your wife prepares and mm. you know takes a bit of rest. Yeah, yeah how the baby burp? Crying, how the mm. baby burp? Exactly, uh, it takes so a that, long time so that your wife can just rest after that. Wow, honestly, yeah. yeah. it's a whole new skill set. Or it's like probation. Yeah. Yeah. And this probation cannot fail. One, you must pass. Yeah, you must pass. There's no room for failure. You must. I think on top of parenthood like it's important for you to be there as a couple because you just achieve this feat of like having a child it, that's so romantic and you need time to be there <laughs> the hey, man you okay? <laughs> don't understand it. no the silence was really loud when yeah, you said romantic like, the big yeah. question mark on their head it must is, celebrate lah must you celebrate think about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. you guys just created a human being that's me and you eh. that's ours eh. this one my one this one my <laughs> yeah. one eh. it's really like, like, like sit in the- yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that That's time true. is important too. Yeah, That's yeah, true. yeah. I think that, that that time happens maybe in in the first hour when the baby was first like. Oh, then the first and then the, the, photo and then the bah, reality bah, 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 bah. hits yeah. and you need the baby to change the diaper. Have you heard of the fathering brain? Oh no. The father brain. Fathering it's, brain. Okay, I can't really recall the exact research, but they say men are not very natural with babies, right? Mm. But research has shown that. Uh, in the first few weeks of the baby's birth, if men spend more time with their child, uh, you actually create neural connections in your mind mm. to be able to be in that role of a father. Researchers yeah. find significant changes in fathers' brains between the prenatal and postpartum period. Yeah, yeah. And that. it is proven with before and after MRI scans. Not just we all talk, talk, talk like that. Yeah, but real one. Mm. Did you find that it was hard to focus at work after being a dad? Like you're just thinking, like, what's my baby doing? Like. Was it difficult for you or was it just an easy transition for you to just, okay, back to work? It is very different. La. I mean, the momentum is obviously very different, tapping on a very different part of my brain mm. uh, and, and my body. But I mean, it's almost like coming back from maybe a ho- holiday. 
Right? Mm. You just got to get into the swing of things. So I don't find that it is extremely challenging. I mean, I feel like if it is, there's proper planning in advance, right, and there's proper communication of, some of how some of these things can happen, uh, I think, yeah, the transition back to the workplace shouldn't be that um, mm. challenging. As an employer, right, do you, do you find that most people, like your employees, would take paternity leave? Yes. Yeah. I, I think we also try to make sure that, you know, as uh, employers, as bosses, me and my partner, we, we try to lead by example. Do yeah. you have any uh, advice or tips for like other business owners, bosses, or even like HR professionals to like, how do you create that working environment where people feel safe to take paternity leave? Um, I mean, I would say that a, a happy family, right, is very important. Right, if you want a happily, happy employee. Because if there are things at home that is not going well because they can't be present as a dad, right, they're going to bring those like, you know, emotional burden or the, the stress that they have into the workplace. Mm. So if you really have you know, a, a, a HR practice where it really f- allows dad to, to be present and at the same time contribute as an employee, I think it's a win-win. Mm. I don't see it as a, I lose an employee for additional week or an additional day just because they have to go mm. off to attend to something at home. From the employee perspective, um, I think a lot of it is about communicating your situation. How do you expect your boss to understand mm. if you don't even say yeah. that in the first place? Yeah. Actually, even my kid now, like sometimes like he wants something, he never tell me, he just melt down. I'm like, hey, bro, you just, you can, <laughs> you can really, just bro. tell me. That's you know. why he tell you secret. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> but we're approaching this assuming, you know, everything is all prim and proper at home, we're ready. But your financial situation might not be ideal to equip you to be ready for more leave or more time away. And then you can just tell your boss like, hey, you know, I'm, we're expecting a child. Is there any other responsibilities I can take on in the time being so that I can better prepare for, like be fi- more financially ready for when my kid is here? Mm. I feel like that's also an important conversation to have because sometimes yeah. we're not all there yet. Do you find it difficult balancing, you know, the romantic side of being a husband being a um, and then being a, a co-parent you mm. know yeah of course actually quite interesting so far we've been talking about like balancing between being an employee slash employer mm. and like a father but then now there's the additional husband so I, I think it's coming to a point also like to recognize that actually in this whole equation right you are first and foremost a husband yes. before your dad like the whole fatherhood things doesn't work mm. if you are not a good husband in the first place I see this happen so much like people forget that they are a couple yeah but it's easy to forget you have to be very intentional about mm. things. The things like setting date nights. It is mm. things like, you know, I have to check in with my wife. Let's have a conversation. I know we only have two minutes. Mm. How are things? You mm. okay? Like don't have to pour everything out cause mm. we don't have time. But actually in that asking, are you okay? Means a lot to your wife. Really two minutes? No, I mean, I'm being very <laughs> Short answer, <laughs> like, three words. Yeah, TLDR for me. <laughs> you okay or not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what are some differences between being like a husband and a father? Like the mindset shift. As a husband, you're a partner. La. Mm. You're doing mm. this together. So I, I think like, um, you know, people say that in a relationship, you need to give 50-50, right? Mm. Actually, it's, it's quite idealistic. La. You have to come to a point where you come home, you tell your wife, oh, actually, I'm at 20% right now. And then your wife will say, okay, you know what? I'll take out 80%. Mm. Mm. But then on another day, when your wife or your husband, because of staying at home, you know, the kids have meltdown the whole day for some reason, cannot explain one. You come home and your wife or your husband tells you, wow, I'm at 30% because of whatever that's happened. Mm. You know, then your wife or husband coming back from work will then do the same thing and say that, you know what, mm. I'll take up 70%. And then when you both have bad days, both have 20% only. <laughs> all cry together. All cry together. <laughs> all melt down together. That's what it means to be in a family. Both family sit the monster <laughs> <and> cry. <laughs> Tell me you, you still got date night or the last 18 months. The first year was not, was not easy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was really, really not easy because it's very, very easy to get consumed by this little thing that has come into your life and that you want to give everything like all your heart, all mm. your energy to this kid. And we're not operating as, as husband and wife, we're just operating as our role of like father and, and, and mother. Mm. Mm. And, and that's where we realized that, yeah, I think we need to do something different. Uh, end of last year, we decided to, you know, leave our kid like in Singapore. We went for like a short couple trip nice. like, overseas. Mm. Yeah, just to have the opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. to reconnect yeah. like, like again and spend time with each other. Even though we miss our kid a lot, but we realized that if we come back from the trip really, really happy, 
then I think our family is going to be uh, a happier like uh, mm. place to be in as well mm. for the kid. Mm. I think fatherhood is so beautiful and, and so exciting actually. What advice do you have to give for first-time fathers or maybe, you know, people who are considering being dead? I would say don't Google so much. <laughs> wow. Google is your is your worst enemy <laughs> sometimes. Quora. Quora is the worst. Quora. <laughs> More questions than yeah, answers. Yeah, yeah. It really doesn't help you. Mm. Um, I think like what Josiah mentioned, I think the advice I'll give you is really have a, a support network. Mm. Yeah, people that you can trust, that you can share the struggles that you're going through. Maybe it's a guy thing. Of course, I'm generalizing, but guys tend to keep the feelings to themselves. First, you need to recognize you're not alone. And second, you need to recognize that uh, it's okay to air out your grievances. Mm. Don't talk about the moments where you're frustrated and you talk about the moments where you think you have failed in your parenthood journey. Yeah, you're not alone as a, as a father. Look for your fellow fathers. Then y'all can, wow, shack bro together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. How, how's it going? Wow, shack bro. Shack bro. How about you? <laughs> wow, shack bro. <laughs> it's definitely a lifelong learning process. Most importantly, you want to provide for your child and be there for your partner and remind yourself that you are more than enough for your loved ones. Thank you for joining us on The Hot Pot. You can also listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and me listen. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. And thank you to our two special guests, Josiah and Selming, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. I have, I have, I have. Passion. Use your more, the, the more passion. passion. More energy. More energy. More passion. Passion. More energy. <laughs> <laughs> more energy. <laughs> <laughs> I say use the feeling that my he's need having to, at the I need to use the washroom. The hinges on this. <laughs> I got it, I got it. I push your side. Then suddenly you so see the carpet a bit dark, darker. Oh,